Welcome to the Siemens training video in which I will be reviewing the technical requirements and best practice to ensure gas turbine products are delivered to the repair and overhaul bases without damage or corrosion. My name is Martin Radford, I'm Head of Long Term Programmes for Aeroderivative Gas Turbines and I'll be talking you through the sections of this video which is applicable to all SGT A30 and 35 engines. Recently, Siemens has observed gas turbines arriving at the overhaul facility with damaged components or corrosion of the gas washed surfaces. This is primarily due to poor preparation of the gas turbine before removal from berth, inadequate shipping protection or poor storage equipment. In one instance, the corrosion of the gas washed surfaces was so extensive that the additional material replacement bill was over £600,000. In this video, we will explain preparation of the transportation equipment, storage and preparation of the MVP bag, consumables required, compressor washing and inhibiting of the gas turbine prior to removal, correct blanking of the gas turbine, fitment to the transportation equipment, containment of loose items and preservation. It is also worth noting that all the information in this video can be referenced in the Product Advisory Bulletin 0200300 and in the Operation and Maintenance Manual. And it is these documents that take precedent. So here we can see an engine stand being prepared for transportation. Please ensure that the stand has been inspected by an approved service provider and the lifting certificate is valid for the period of transportation. Moving to the front of the stand, we can see that the front guard is in position and the pit pins are serviceable and are well lubricated. Moving to the rear of the stand, you can observe that the rear guard is in position with the pit pins in place and the rear engine mount is in a good condition with all the bolts ready for installation. Finally, take a look at the suspension mounts which are positioned all the way around the stand. Please inspect each one to make sure there's no damage to the bolt or to the rubber insert and there's no cracking or corrosion. It's also worth remembering that all this information can be found in the Engine and Maintenance Manual, Chapter 8. So here we can see that the MVP bag has been folded and stored correctly following delivery of the last gas turbine. It's really important that the bags are both removed from the stand, inspected for damage to the Z-locking feature or tears to the bag. These items play a critical role in ensuring that the engine is transported to the overhaul shop without any ingress of water or humidity building up within the engine. Here can also be seen the Z-locking clips. These should be used to ensure that the bag is zipped correctly and there's no gaps or damage during installation. We can also see on the pallet the VPL paper and brown paper as well as the desiccant used during the preparation of the engine for transportation. All these items are critical to ensuring that the engine leaves the customer's facility and arrives at the overhaul base without any further damage or corrosion taking place. Another critical activity for the prevention of corrosion to the gas wash services is that before the engine is taken offline, compressor washing and inhibiting cycles are conducted. Key points to note are that multiple washers may be required before the drain water runs clear and that following the compressor wash, dry cranking is not sufficient to remove the moisture from the engine and a fired run will be required. Following the fired run, the engine will also require inhibiting in accordance with Chapter 7 of the Operation and Maintenance Manual. Make sure the package drains, intake drain and compressor drain valves are open to allow the wash fluid to drain away and that the cleaning fluid wash tank has been filled with the appropriate cleaning fluid. Please note, for DLE units, make sure that the drain solenoid are in good working condition and are open for the wash cycle. The gas turbine is cranked to purge speed and once the starter motor cuts, commence injection of the cleaning fluid from the air intake.
At the end of the wash cycle, please collect a sample of the drain fluid. This will initially be a dark contaminated fluid and multiple water washes may be required if the gas wash surfaces are still contaminated. Please note that after each wash with cleaning fluid, two rinse cycles are required to ensure that the cleaning fluid has been flushed through. Always allow the unit to drain for the required 15 minutes between washes and rinses. After the wash program has been completed, commence a purge cycle to blow out any residual water. A 15 minute fired run is required to dry the gas turbine out after the water wash. Failure to do so will result in corrosion of the gas wash surfaces. Here, inhibiting fluid is being sprayed manually to the air inlet to coat the gas wash surfaces. Please allow this to drain and then refit the drain blanks. The gas turbine has now been inhibited and is ready to be removed. As part of the outage planning, it's recommended that stocks of cleaning fluid and inhibiting fluid are checked to ensure sufficient chemicals are available. For information on the quantities and the list of currently approved chemicals, please see the latest advisory bulletin or contact your Siemens representative. In addition to ensuring the equipment and consumables are in place, it is also important to schedule the wash, fire drying run and inhibiting. If the outage schedule does not permit a fire drying run, then we recommend you do not compress or wash the gas turbine, as failure to complete a fire drying run will potentially increase corrosion of the gas wash surfaces. So critical in the preparation of the gas turbine for transportation is the correct blanking of all the exposed features of the engine. Key points here that all the blanks have been fitted to all the exposed orifices. It's also interesting to note in this case the HP 5 and 6 bleed valve is remained fitted. This is because the engine is being transported in an outer container. Where the engine is being transported purely in the transportation stand, the HP bleed valve should be removed because of its close proximity to the external of the stand. In that instance, when the bleed valve is removed, blanks should be fitted to the core. It is worth noting that this gas turbine has been prepared in the shop environment. Were this taking place in the field, then both the front and rear blanks would be fitted once the engine has been removed from the berth and transferred to the transportation stand. Remove the MVP bag securing plates and rear mount and place the bag in the transportation stand. Unfold the bag and check for any damage. Secure the MVP bag into the stand using the side plates. If damage is found, contact your regional technical support team or the operational service desk. Remove the front, rear and side guards to improve access to the transportation stand. It is advisable to line the bottom of the MVP bag with paper to help absorb unwanted moisture. Ensure the trunnions are fitted to the engine before lifting. Maneuver the engine from the berth over the transportation stand, ensuring no one stands under a suspended load at any time. Lower the engine into the transportation stand carefully to ensure no damage is caused to the engine, the external hardware or the transportation stand. Secure the trunnions to the transportation stand and attach the rear mount to the O5 module using the flange bolts and then torque tighten to the correct specification. So it's at this point in the dispatch process that we look at the matter of loose items. Quite often we've found these to be loose and unprotected in the MVP bag. This has the potential to cause damage to the component as well as the MVP bag. Here, in the case of the HP bleed valve, were it to be removed, we would expect it to be packaged both to protect it and the MVP bag. Once it has been packaged, the item is best stowed in the rear of the engine. And this goes for any other loose items as well. 
that they're suitably packaged and safely stored in the rear of the MVP bag. Unfold the top half of the MVP bag close to the engine. Again, checking for any damage. And if found, please contact your Siemens representative. Cover the top off the engine with brown paper before placing the desiccant on top. When unpacking the desiccant, check the humidity indicator inside the bag to make sure that the desiccant is satisfactory. Retain the humidity indicator for use within the MVP bag. Please note that the MVP bag must be sealed within 20 minutes of opening the desiccant, so it is important that this operation is planned. Place the desiccant bandoliers over the engine as shown. Then lift the top half of the bag over the gas turbine, taking care not to cause any damage to the bag or the gas turbine. Start to seal the bag using the markers to ensure correct alignment between the top and the lower bag. Use the Z-lock applicator as shown to secure the two halves of the bag together. Finally, reopen the bag and place the humidity indicator in the MVP bag window. Then reseal. Check the humidity indicator daily if the engine is not moved from site immediately. If the indicator shows humidity, replace or replenish the desiccant as required. Finally, reinstall the front, rear and side guards, ensuring that the pins are fully engaged. So now the gas turbine is safely enclosed in the MVP bag, front and rear guards have been fitted. There's a few final points just to note. Firstly, I'd like to point out the position for forks to be engaged with the stand. It's important to use the front one and rear one, which are clearly marked, and not to put the forks in any other area, as this could potentially damage the gas turbine. You can clearly see that the humidity indicator paper has been fitted here and that it's blue and there's also a document wallet for the engine logbook. If this wallet is used, best practice is to seal the logbook in a plastic bag in case there's any water ingress to the document wallet. Our preference is for the logbook to be couriered directly to the overhaul base. So coming to the front of the transportation stand, there's also a wallet here. In here you can find the instructions for closing the MVP bag, plus a couple of the Z-lock clips. Siemens would also recommend a copy of the operational service maintenance document is kept here too. This details the equipment and how to service and maintain it. It's also worth noting these are in a plastic container to prevent water ingress. Siemens recommends for additional protection the use of a specialised storage container. This gives the protection to the unit while being transported and also affords the opportunity to store the unit should this be required as part of the trip to the overhaul base. For any information about the shipping container or the transportation equipment, please contact your Siemens representative. <laughs>